I love working with my orchestras. Uh, they're all very, very different, playing in different societies, different halls. Um, also, they, their style differs a lot. And I, I find it really, really interesting because that means that I have to challenge myself as a conductor and musician every single week I work with them. All of them have wonderful characteristics. Uh, and for example, now when I'm in Paris, I'm always so, so fascinated and, 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 and charmed by their musical intelligence, which is something I've never seen anywhere else in the world. This, this absolute understanding of, of what we want to achieve and, and how to figure out things and is really wonderful. Oslo has this burning intensity, which is really uh, every single note they play with really, really strength and, and, and passion. Uh, and I can really trust them, and they're really reliable, always very prepared. Um, but the only thing we have to fight with the concert hall there, so that actually has made the orchestra even stronger, because the concert hall is not so good. Then in Amsterdam, of course, you have, on the other hand, one of the most glorious concert halls. Uh, the radiating warmth and roundness of the orchestra. They have maybe one of the most beautiful sounds uh, I've ever heard in my life is the sound of the Concertgebouw Orchestra. It's all about beauty, so you really have to have to always uh, search for all, all different other colors and sometimes if they need to be rough you have to really ask for it because they always prioritize this gorgeous sound which is, is, is an unbelievable honor to work with them. Uh, then the Paris Orchestra is, is, is absolutely charming. They play with a distinct sound which is like no other. Uh, no other orchestra sounds like the Orchestra Paris. They, they have brilliance, they have transparency. And the woodwind section is, is, is complete individuals in the most beautiful way coming together. And they bring this color of sound which, which you know, often I, when I prepare a score I think, oh yes, I want this and that. But then, you know, when I hear them play I think, oh, I think this was better than what I thought. It's really important that all the three orchestras have very different profiles because otherwise it would not make sense to have one guy in all of them. Um, so um, I try to honor their traditions but then also further develop in directions which would make sense uh, for us to play. So for example here uh, we play a lot of Stravinsky, Ballet Russe for this season, next season, which is a nice project. We get to really work on the sound. Stravinsky, for example, which would not be uh, this kind of completely Russian influence, but actually very French, which I find, for example, Rite of Spring or Firebird. Lots of color of impressionism and, and transparency and brilliance instead of only this kind of primitive sound. Um, then, you know, one always tries to find the strength of the orchestra, but then also to support the, the, the things we need to still develop. In Oslo we do Shostakovich, uh, which is a lovely thing to do with them because they really understand this music and feel that it's theirs. Um, it was a pleasure to do the Sibelius and we continue playing Sibelius because that somehow to do that with that orchestra, Sibelius with Oslo, it, it really makes me happy every single time. And in Amsterdam we try to explore lots of different possibilities. The orchestra has a very wonderful history working with the great composers, great conductors, so there is a lot to kind of take and, and, and try and put together. Everything in today's world sounds the same, uh, but I, I'm very proud that the three orchestras I work with, they, they really differ a lot. Um, Oslo is burning intensity. Paris is brilliance and intelligence and Amsterdam is beauty and warmth and of course all of them combine lots of different characteristics but if one would have to say one or two adjectives that would be the, those ones. As a conductor one needs to always adjust and you need to be changing, you need to be flexible enough to always see okay now the orchestra needs this from me. So you have to change. And if you would do all, only the same things all the time, you would not get the most out of the people. So one always needs to adjust and see, hmm, this and that we need now. But um, you also learn a lot from the musicians every single day because they give you, it's a, it's a dialogue. You give them something, they bounce it back and give something else. And, 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 and that is the most somehow inspiring part of my life, I think. I had a really good teacher, Jorma Panola, and he, he was a master in, in telling us that, look, just trust, trust the musicians and they will trust you back. And I think that's the most important. I love playing the cello and it follows me almost everywhere. Um, although I always have this feeling, ah, I should be practicing. <laughs> but um, it's you know, something which is very, 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 very close to my heart. 
Uh, I play quite a lot of chamber music with the members, which is also a nice way to connect in a little bit different way. And then occasionally I do a bit of play directing. Uh, and now next project we have is Brahms Double Concerto with Daniel Osakovic in Oslo. And we take it on tour with Oslo to Paris, to Vienna, to Amsterdam, which is really, really, I'm looking forward to that. Being a cellist is, is, I think, quite useful for a conductor. I mean, all instruments have their benefits. And I think most of the cellists are very sound oriented in a sense. We always listen to the sound because that's the, the best thing about the cello is that you can play really beautiful and lots of different layers and the sound and try to find the right resonance. And I think that's something which I always have inside me, a little cellist when I conduct, because those kind of things are, are still very important. Concerts can be quite long and exhausting sometimes, but you have to always feel after a concert that you've given everything. And if you don't feel completely uh, like this um, when you walk off stage, emotionally or physically, it can be both. Or, or, or but um, it, one is just I have a banana, uh, maybe a um, very delicious drink, uh, <laughs> and, and that's it. I feel the most at home in, in all, all the places I, I am really, because I, I only work with orchestras I really love. Uh, I love being in Paris, I love being in Oslo, I love being in Amsterdam. Uh, I live in Helsinki, uh, a bit in New York also. So, um, yeah, a bit here and there. If I have to give advice on, on travelers, what to do in Oslo, Paris, Amsterdam, apart from coming to concerts, of course, um, in Paris, there's so many things. I love museums, and the Louvre is, is maybe the greatest museum in the world. Uh, I could recommend a thousand restaurants and wine bars and everything, but now I will stay silent. Oslo is also a wonderful place for museums. Uh, you find uh, the new National Gallery is absolutely gorgeous. Great collection, one of the finest, El Greco, for example, there. In Amsterdam, you also have great museums. The Rijksmuseum, just next to the Concertgebouw. Uh, Amsterdam is also so atmospheric. You can, you can bike around if you're not afraid of dying. And, and uh, beautiful scenery and great people. So in all of those places, you find the right people, the right places, and you're happy forever, really. <laughs>